Hey everyone, today is January 18th, 2024, and check out the beautiful snow, beautiful scenery. We're just checking out some awesome scenery with the snow stuck to the trees, nice deep snow. And right here coming up, even the snowmobile lanes are finally open. They usually open back in November, but this year was a warm start to the season. It's finally getting nice and cold. Right now we're reading on the car about 8 degrees, and we are heading to the truck camp. We're going to spend the night there. It's nice and cold. We still have like five hours by the time we get there of daylight. We'll clean it up in there, get a fire going maybe, head back out to the store, get something to eat for dinner and breakfast, go back in there, spend some time with the wood stove, get a good night's sleep. Just want to check up on it. Haven't been there in a little bit. It's probably been a month or so since the last time we were there. But now I just wonder how much snow there is on top of the roof. Last year we had to put some temporary supports in there to make sure heavy snow wouldn't crush it. But thankfully this is very light, fluffy snow. That's the reason why you can see it blowing around in the wind. This section of road has a couple of big frost heaves. It always does when it gets cold, right here. And the road is very slippery, so you don't want to go over them real fast because it rocks the car back and forth and it could send you off. This road is pretty slippery. It's too cold for road salt to be effective. Road, road salt's basically useless below 16 degrees. So they put down sand for the time being. We'll be there in about an hour or so. Nice sunny out, beautiful weather. We got a ton of firewood here, but first I gotta shovel a path over to the door. All right, everyone. Oop, pricker bush. I just shoveled a path over to the truck. Gotta get those bungee cords off of there because those might start burning when we get this thing fired up. There's not a ton of snow on the roof. Last year, there was a couple feet and I thought it might crush the truck, so there's temporary columns in there I'm gonna remove while we're staying here. That snow will melt off the chimney quite fast. I think it's too cold for any of the snow on the roof to start melting. That gap of air between the roof and the truck will prevent any of that from melting. Got our little security light here. Hopefully that still works in the cold temperatures. Just shovel the path. We have about a foot of snow on the ground. The bottom is crunchy. Couldn't really get that up too well with the shovel. Haven't been in here at all. A couple of months. Oh, but look, it's been so cold that even the last time I was here, the footprints, the snow I left in here didn't even melt. Because you saw at the beginning there when I was shoveling, there was no footprints coming to this thing. This thing was completely snowed in. It just didn't melt. It was so cold since the last time I came in here. I came in here just to get something last time, and I also removed things. There's no more microwave in here anymore. Cleaned it up, gave it away. Also, some other items in here I got rid of. Is that a new mouse nest? Really? Is that a brand new mouse nest? Is something living in there right now? No, but something made a nest. Maybe it was just there and I overlooked it. I removed all the insulation and toilet paper, I think. Yeah, this has not been chewed at all, the fresh stuff. Also, look, none of the mouse traps are tripped either. And someone was right, instead of putting peanut butter, which rots, I put some pieces of chocolate in the other ones. And that doesn't seem to mold or anything. So we gotta do a little bit of cleaning. I gotta take apart all these shelves, sweep them off, clean it up, 
sanitize the table over there where I'll be eating. So these are lolly columns I put in the middle here, temporary jacks for buildings, or they can be permanent if you're trying to straighten out the floors in an old crooked house. Well, this was just because last year when I saw feet of snow, the roof was actually buckling a little bit. So we'll remove this now. Everything on the roof is pretty fluffy. Then we can start cooking in here. Start up the stove. Get some nice heat running in here. We got a little bit of wood in here. And we got a ton of wood in the back. So I hope there's enough kindling where I can get a fire started in here. And the next time I come here, I'll bring some more scrap lumber that we can just keep in here for starting fires. Right there, we have a smaller camping stove. Hopefully, I'll do a hot tent video this winter. We'll see. The table is perfectly clean. Not a single mouse poop on it. Last time I had to clean it. And, yeah... So here we have Windex, which is completely frozen, but maybe I can use that to sanitize things once it defrosts in here. Right back here I have my bed. I brought the mattress in the truck. This right here is from when I go culvert camping. The last one we did, these piping right here, we had a hydroelectric generator that was able to charge phones and stuff, and... This was supposed to be a pump for a little sink in a funnel, but that didn't work out. So look, there's really not much to move in here this trip. We can leave everything as is, except this one piece of wood. Usually I have to move a bunch of clutter out, but I decide just to get rid of it all because, you know, never going to use it, it's just in my way. And we'll also get these jacks out of the way too. Take a look in the fireplace. There's a little bit of ash in there. I'm not going to shovel it out. A little bit of ash on the bottom of a fireplace or wood stove is a good thing because it acts as protection from the bottom so it doesn't overheat the stove. Now, every time I make a video here, people always tell me, if you want more heat, remove the burners. These do not remove. It just shows you where to put the food. They don't come off. It's not that type of stove. You heat directly on that. Make sure the damper's open. And let's see what we got here for wood. This stuff is going to be extremely dry. This stuff sat in here all summer, and this place baked over 100 degrees on certain days. And I think we got enough kindling in here to start a fire. Got some cardboard and little pieces of trim board. Um, I was thinking, uh, this stuff here, like the mouse nest, I'll probably throw that into the fire. Up here, it looks like there are a couple poops, but we don't use these shelves for anything but storing random things I can probably just throw away. Like right there, that's a couple gallons of stain. Maybe I could use that on the project to preserve a fence, otherwise I'm gonna have to dispose of that because those are very rusty. Right here's like a pan to cook a turkey in. Some other kind of strainer. It's all junk. I might just scrap all the stuff that's right here. And then over here, there's not much. I think I'm gonna wait until the summertime. I'll move it all outside, and I'll bring a vacuum in here with a large power bank, and we can just vacuum it all up, because we don't use any of this. Although, this right here was a good idea I had earlier. A lot of people liked this idea from my last video. I'm gonna come back in here with like a Walmart bag. I'm gonna collect, those are speakers and lights from the truck. I'm gonna get all that out of there. And this is where, we're gonna use this as like a little refrigerator. Because this is in the front of the truck, and a bit away from the fireplace. This will stay kind of cool, but not frozen if we left our food outside overnight. So this will be used as like a little refrigerator in the winter time, just stuff food in there. Or maybe at some point we could figure out an easy way of opening up the engine bay here. Cause this is on hinge, no it's not on hinges, two clips and the thing lifts up. So it's not hinged, but actually, Let's see what's inside here right now. Don't have to move too much. Those are parts for little camping stoves. That's a little tiny frying pan I use when I go camping and I don't have a lot of space. These are all parts for that little stove, the one in the back right there. Let's see, do I have to lift these? 
No, those are hinges after all. Hopefully there's not an angry raccoon in here. Haven't opened this in a long time. Now the thing is, any animal could come in here at night and steal food if we left it down here. But, because this is exposed to outside, all we would have to do is jam like a cooler in here. See the grill of the truck is blocked with plywood. There's no engine. By the looks of it, the engine had a severe head gasket or oil leak. You see it's covered and there's like so much sludge of a leaking oil all over the place in there. What's this tag say? Well, everything on this truck's been stripped. Maybe a good future thought. We could put a cooler in here. Oh, come on, is it not going to go down? There we go. We'll leave the propane outside. Couldn't really avoid getting a little bit of snow in the sled, but thankfully it's so cold I can just knock that off and hopefully it won't melt. Just got this thermometer out of the truck. We'll give it a little bit and see how cold it is outside. Let's leave it somewhere not in the sun. Back down in there. This mattress has seen better days. It's got rips, it's tearing, but this is actually just the cover on another plastic mattress. So, I always use this one when I'm camping in the winter because it can get wet and it doesn't get inside it. It's a hospital mattress, it's a hospital cot. This floor, even though it's not melting the snow, it's extremely slippery, very, very slippery. It's like a coating of snow on sheer ice, this floor in here. All right, everyone, my bed's all made. I'm gonna leave this stuff inside, it's not in my way. And we're gonna head off to the store and get something to eat for dinner before it gets dark. Still got literally four hours before the sun goes down. We got plenty of time. We'll probably be back before the sun goes down. And this stuff is not in my way. I remember the first time I camped here, I had a, I brought a portable log splitter and used it inside here because I didn't have a stockpile of firewood here at the time. And this drink is completely frozen solid. Maybe once we get this thing going, you can shake it and turn it into a nice slush. Sometimes Gatorades do that. They'll turn into a nice slushy consistency. Wow, there's a whole ton of turkeys over there. It's a lot of turkeys. big flock. They're hanging around the farmer's field because of course when they harvest the corn some of it's left over and they're able to scratch at the snow and uncover all the corn that's left behind. Alright, that scrap wood will go really fast. It took a bit there to get the cardboard started, probably because this place gets pretty humid in the summer, and that box is probably moist and frozen. But, we already got some of the kindling going, so now we're going to put one big log in there, and hopefully it's able to catch that on fire with that kindling. That's a very dry log, so let's hope for the best. We'll leave this door open while it catches up leave it cracked like that no it's not an option I guess it's gonna swing open but I think we're good 
Just give that a little while to catch up. Let's look outside. Starting to smoke. In a couple minutes, it'll melt all the snow off the top of the cap. And before nighttime, I want to bring that cardboard box out here and completely fill it up with some of the wood we have stored outside so I don't have to keep coming out in this cold weather. Let's see how warm we can get the inside of the truck. So currently outside, it's exactly 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And on the inside, we just started the fire less than five minutes ago. Inside, it's 25 degrees. Not, ex not exactly sure why, maybe the sun hitting the sides of the truck is heating it up a little bit, but we're gonna see how warm we can get that, and we'll check on the temperature throughout the night outside. Oh, it's starting to drip. I'm letting this truck grow in a lot getting some cover around it. Hopefully in the summer it won't be as hot anymore. Spring is coming soon, look at this. Already got some buds. You can see the outline of the leaf this bud is about to turn into. This side of the truck, the paint job is actually a little bit nicer. And this side, it's actually got a nice painted yellow rim unlike the other side. And you can see where I spray foamed it. Spray foam turns that ugly yellow if you put it in the, if you apply it in the wrong temperatures. See, I put a sign in the front. I made it, but I didn't like it. It says bear crossing or bear exiting. And I'm storing a bunch of window screens and stuff that I'm thinking I might be able to use on the truck in the summer. Got some dripping going on. It's not that hot yet. All right, everyone, I just shut the damper halfway so we're not losing all the heat. And that also makes it so the fire can focus on being upright instead of slanted backwards with the draft wind. And we can maybe get some more stuff. That piece is definitely going. I just jammed another piece in there. Now, let me show you what I got over here. Got some paper towels. So I'm going to do some cleaning in here. So, got some paper plates gonna try to make a compartment in here where mice can't get and I can leave that got some water for cooking with and drinking we'll keep that here so it can stay warm in the truck got some fast rice to make got some fish I'm gonna cook tonight got some bread and cheese because in the morning I'm gonna make some grilled cheese got some butter for cooking with a bunch of pre-peeled garlic and Powerade keep here inside the truck now this cooler I'm gonna actually try to put it inside there what we're not gonna use tonight let me take out what we're using tonight we're gonna use the rice tonight we're gonna use the fish tonight the garlic and butter and we only got two things we're not gonna use tonight and I'm obviously not going to use the rest of the butter, so I'll put that back in here. And I want to open that and see if we can easily get it inside there, because an animal is not going to be able to easily chew into this. A raccoon is smart enough, maybe it could open it, but, you know, that would honestly be kind of funny. It's all it's going to get is that stuff. It won't be the end of the world. We're going to open that thing up and see how's our fire doing. Pretty good. Well, the floor is slippery until it starts getting hot and drying out. Let's see. Will this stay up by itself? I don't think it'll stay up by itself. Oh my gosh, there's a bear in there! I'm just kidding. But yeah, something has been living under here. There's flat spots where something's been laying down. There's a frisbee under here. The frame of the truck is severely rotted out. 
This thing would never be allowed to go on the road again. Never. Let me show everyone what's under there. Honestly, peeking my head under there, I was a little bit scared that there might be something like a bear because there's a big enough space under here. And I've seen bears hibernating under people's sheds before. So just take a look at that. Lots and lots of frame rot. This thing was on the road for decades up north here and they use a ton of road salt. So very rusted out, very oily in the front. The engine probably had a lot of leaks. There's a lot of storage space here. There's a Frisbee under here. Looks like part of a cane. If we look all the way underneath, nope, no bear, but there is definitely enough space where something could hibernate. Under the rear or the side of the truck that we can't really get to, there is a good almost foot gap where something could easily dig its way underneath here. Yeah, frame is very rotten. Probably still strong, but just take a look at that. That's very rotten. Oh, it's even cracked. The frame is even cracked right there. Yeah. Very cracked. And the hood opens up from the outside. Are those brake lines or those cooling lines? So we can go ahead and put this in there for now. Fits perfectly. And that's so exposed to the outside, that'll always be like refrigeration temperature or even freezer temperature with this weather. But a cooler can also work in reverse. It can also keep things from freezing for quite a while also. I'm gonna open that glove box and throw everything in there out. We've got a big mixing bowl right here. I'm gonna go fill it up with everything in that glove box. All right, so there was a lot more in the glove box than I thought there'd be. It's still gotta be cleaned. There's actually like frozen mud residue in there. At some point, water was able to get into that, probably before I put the new windshield on. So we have a bunch of mirrors that came off the truck, a rear light, some reflectors, looks like a soldering gun. This is a pretty cool tail light. Don't know if it came from the truck or not. Here's a lock. Here's a, looks like a throttle cable. Um, wiper blade, some kind of attachment. A glass lens for the truck. We got a speaker in here. Oops. Didn't break though. This is all junk. I don't know why I was holding on to it, but I'm gonna go throw it all out. The wood stove is already up into good operation temperatures. The stove itself, not that hot yet. Cause that's thin metal this is thicker metal takes a little bit this is a cast iron dutch oven we'll be using for cooking might as well preheat that because that takes a while it's already clean from last time and we have another little pot i can get out of the truck we can put there looks like it's doing well definitely caught in there so we'll go ahead and shut this for a little while it's got an air hole there so it'll keep burning keep heating up all right i brought a box of firewood in also, there was two hooks that I found in the truck. Maybe I should get more, hang some things up. I could hang most of this stuff up here, then that would give me a lot more counter space. That wood I brought in there is hardwood. That'll last a lot longer than this pine, but I will try to get rid of the pine. Thankfully, this wood, it fits in there. That 18 inch piece does fit in there. Let's see how we're doing. Haven't looked in here in about 10 minutes. Going pretty nice still. Once there's room, there is, let's put one piece of this in there, the hardwood, which will burn hotter, and it'll also last a lot longer without having to touch it. All right, everyone, so here's my plan of what I'm gonna make tonight. And I'm gonna have to do it in a couple of steps because there's only two burners in here in these bigger pans. I can only fit one over there at a time. So I'm gonna have to make things in little steps put them here on paper plates and mix them together and heat it all up at the end. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to heat up one cup of water with these two broth cubes. And when I have the broth, I'll put another cup of the instant rice in there. Once that's cooked, I'll probably dump it out into a plate so I can reuse the pan. Then I'm going to fill that up with some water and we're going to hydrate this freeze-dried beef and then once that's hydrated we'll dump it out of the pan so we can use the pan once again and then I'm gonna 
use this frying pan, put some butter in it, and I have some vegetables and chicken. I'm going to drain the juices out of these cans, put them in there, fry them a little bit, brown the edges, mix the beef, the chicken, the, ve the vegetables, the rice, mix it all together into like fried rice, and add some of this stuff here to make it taste good. I've done the same thing at home, but usually I'll use more pans so I can do it all at once. Season it with some pepper, Italian season, and add some spice to it. People have asked me in camping videos, why do you bring more than one knife? That's in case I contaminate something with like raw juices. And I don't have a great way of cleaning it. And that's just some of the Japanese sauce. So I think the first thing we're going to start off with is the rice, like I said. So I'm going to just have to eyeball it. I forgot a measuring cup. I'm going to pour what I think is a cup of water in there and what I think is a cup of rice once it's boiling. And if I add a little too much water, I can dump a little bit of it out once it's done expanding. Or I can add a little bit towards the end because it's going to be like double cooked. It's going to be fried after it's done cooking. Let me reach over here. So I'm going to try to put an inch of this and then an inch of rice later. So let's see. About an inch. Yep. Let's go ahead and put this onto the burner. It'll take a little bit of time for it to start boiling. I wish I had another tiny pot, but I don't. So we'll just do this in a couple of steps. All right, we're done getting things from the truck. So I'm going to close it up so I can start getting warm in here. Take my jacket off. We even got some hooks in here that came with the truck. We can hang it up. Now it should start getting warm. What's the temperature now? Just having it running. We're up to 36. No, 38 it looks like. We're not burning hot enough. Gonna try to add some more. Bunch of little things in here. Maybe we can pull some of this forward. Or up, maybe it'll work. Get some air between there. It's burning good, but we need the flames to get bigger in there. So I'll stick a bunch of smaller stuff in. Try to do that. That stuff caught really fast. We're burning pretty clean too. The floor is no longer slippery, everything's melted. Fire is roaring. But this cooking stove, every time I've ever used it, it kind of sucks. It takes forever to boil water. It's been almost 20 minutes and it's still not boiling. And the temperature has now gone up to 55. All right, I'm going to grab one of my pot holders so I can come over here and put my stuff. This is finally began to boil. The cubes have dissolved. It's now getting very hot in here. Especially next to the stove. Pour some rice in there. That looks like an appropriate amount, huh? Yeah, maybe not enough. Maybe a little more. Good. Let that absorb for like five minutes and then I will go, <clears throat> go ahead and reuse the pot for something else. Right here, I got this all prepared. The got butter's actually melting because it's so close to the stove. It's actually that warm in here. Everything's hot to the touch right around the stove. And that right there is proof that I'm not a vampire. That's a lot of garlic. I thought, might as well use it because I might end up wasting it if I don't. I love eating garlic cloves whole once they cook. And I also got this stick over here, which will be for frying all the vegetables later on. Got everything prepared. So... Just waiting on this. Give that a few minutes to completely absorb everything. Absorb the broth. Makes it taste a little better instead of just plain water. I'll dump that onto a plate. i got to open the plates up. Then we're going to start making some of this. 
All right, I think the water's going to boil faster this time once we get that going again. Because look, we're operating in the too hot range, but it's okay. Even if we started a chimney fire, this whole place is metal. I'm just going to run it hot like that. Temperature in here has got up to 68. All right, let's get this out. That's going to be hard to get all that out. I don't have a spoon or anything, so I'll just use a little bit of water. All right, that washed it out perfectly. Now we're going to put some water in here, get it to a boil again. Don't think it'll take as long this time because we're a lot hotter. That thing is running extremely hot inside. It's way over temperature, but not a single bit of smoke burns so clean when it's at these temps. Now down low, see there's a bunch of pieces of ash and stuff. That right there is basically creosote from last time we used it, and now that we're suddenly applying heat, it's crinkling off and just flowing up and landing somewhere. If we look at the edges of the pipe, you can even see a heat signature. That thing is boiling hot. All right, time to grab this off the stove. Nice and hot, hot enough to Add some of our ground beef. This stuff tastes really good actually. And it tastes just like the fresh stuff once it is made. Or once it absorbs. Okay, that's enough. Now I'll just drain excess water in 15 minutes. That takes 15 minutes for that to start going. Now I can start heating up that frying pan and start frying the vegetables. Since this is all we need that little pan for. Give it a quick stir, just like that. Now this is a big pan, so it's gonna take up both burgers like this, or almost both of them. Once that butter starts melting, I'll throw the vegetables in there. So in the meantime, I gotta go ahead and grab my can opener, which I haven't used in a while, covered in spider webs. Gotta open this up, and we're gonna set it right outside the door for about five minutes until the butter's done melting, just so it can drain the juices out. Keep it like that, let it drain. Same with the chicken. Pop it just a little bit. We're gonna set it outside the drain. All right, coming over here to the door. Gotta open it up. Still got a little bit of daylight, so I just gotta find a place to put these so they can drain. All right, I'll put one of them there at an angle. And I'll put the other one here. Oh. No big deal. Not much of it spilled. And I'll just leave that one tilted right there. And I'll be back at it in like five minutes. Back inside. We're about half melted with the butter. Probably more butter than we needed. Yeah, definitely more butter than we needed. Oh. All right, everyone, this is nice and hot. The butter has now completely melted. Let me walk outside and grab those cans. I'm gonna leave the door open while we cook because it's pretty hot in here. I found a pan lid that will fit this because this is probably gonna splatter a lot. It looks pretty clean. Don't see any mouse poop on it. Get this open now. Come on. There we go. Well, it did flare up as much as I thought. Not as hot as I thought it was going to be. Let's open up the canned chicken. Start frying that stuff together. We don't need the cover yet. I'll stir that around every now and then. Just want to brown the edges a bit. In a couple of minutes, I'll drain the hamburger meat, add that and the rice in together when this is fried up. Even though this is overheating, it's not producing that much cooking heat, so I'll probably stir this around for twice or three times as long as I would typically do at home. Don't think I need the cover. I'll put that off to the side with the knife. Thank you. 
Is there enough room to put the fish on there without it looking like it's going to fall off? Eh. Yeah, that's stable enough. We can at least get that heated. We're obviously going to have to keep spinning the pan around because there's more heat on this side. But once that starts getting heated up, this will trap heat and cook relatively fast once it's heated. That butter will probably make it taste really good. Usually at home, I'll use olive oil, but didn't bring any. Just had a stick of butter. It'll probably taste better with the stick of butter. Got to check on the fire. Oh, it's still very hot in there. It's still overheating, but the flames are just about gone. It's running like a little rocket stove. It's just glowing red embers in there. Just throw one log in every now and then. Kick it around a little bit in there. Add a log. It's now too hot to touch, so I gotta use this little handle right here, which closes it. It actually runs a little hotter if the door is slightly cracked. But it's not secure that way, so it could just blow open. All right, I think it's been long enough for this meat here. So I don't have a strainer, so we're gonna put this over it and try to hug it as much as possible while pouring the liquids out. This is summertime, these meat juices would attract a bear. And this stuff, I swear, it tastes just like actual fresh hamburger meat. Except obviously in this form, it's not raw, so you can't cook it into a patty very easily at all, but it makes awesome sloppy joes and awesome tacos, and it's got a 30 year shelf life in that can if it's unopened. One year shelf life when you open it. All right, we got this now. And I'll clean that when I get home. Every now and then this truck makes a loud bang because it's going from being extremely cold to very warm in here. The sheet metal walls, you hear them buckle every now and then from the expansion as it heats up. Just waiting for that to hopefully get a little hotter. I'm not able to really sear the edges of all that stuff. This thing doesn't produce enough heat even though it's saying 600, no, it's saying 510. How's the other one doing? Is that heating up at all yet? Oh, the butter melted. That's a good sign. Let me just move it around to make sure the butter's underneath the fish. Then it won't get stuck. Now that the butter's melted, it's one of... Oh, it's almost completely melted. Not completely. There's really not much heat in here yet. But let's get that butter all over everything. So nothing's sticking. Nice. Close that up. As soon as that's done, we'll put this over on the full heat. I think I'm just going to go ahead and add everything else in there because I think if we keep slow cooking, we're going to make these vegetables so soft that they fall apart. You need a lot of burner heat to sear them like I was trying to do. Can't do it. This thing just does not produce enough heat even when it's overheating. So I think we're going to add everything, mix it together, let it cool, eat that, and this should be done not too far after. See, it is already cooking in there. Despite not having much heat. Oh, and oh boy, that fish, that smells real good. This just scared the crap out of me that the security light came on because I'm leaving the door open. I was like, who? what animal could possibly be here? I peeked out ever so carefully around this corner, around this corner. But no, this security light tests itself as soon as it gets dark enough to throw its... Um, daylight sensor it'll test itself for like 30 seconds that's why it came on and I guess sometimes animals walk by or sometimes the wind blows trees and sets these off I have one here I have a couple on the rear of the truck and I guess that's what the lights were that people were seeing in my other videos they were asking when I was time lapsing when I was sleeping what's that light that keeps turning on in the back I guess some animal is walking by so we're gonna add everything else now all right, here we go. We're gonna add the hamburger. We're gonna add the rice and on top of that. And this will just discard into the fire. And I'm gonna put some seasoning on that. I'm gonna start off with the pepper. This is way too slow. I wish I brought regular ground pepper. That's going to take forever to get what I want. Oh, the motion sensor turned back on again. Why? 
not the wind. Wonder why it's testing itself. There is no wind. Why'd that light outside turn on again? Creepy. At least this one I can take the top off and sprinkle what I want on there without having to vigorously shake it forever. The Italian season one, at least it comes out very fast. Put a bunch of it on there. We'll mix it around the whole pot. And now we're going to add some of this sauce that makes it taste really good. Go ahead and put a whole ton of that on there. Now we're going to go ahead and mix it around. I may even put more of that stuff. We'll see how much this, how far it goes. And we got to mix all the meat, vegetables, rice together. Mix it all around, all that seasoning. Heat this stuff back up. The rice is still, for the most part, pretty hot. You know, back at home, I've been trying to make friends with the raccoons for a while. I see people on YouTube always have raccoons coming up to their houses, and they're able to get pretty close and feed them. I'm assuming they probably raised them or knew them as babies. I don't think my grown ones will ever do that. There's a, a pair of raccoons that always come by my house. Around here, I haven't set trail cameras in a while, so I don't know who's coming by. That'd be kind of cute if a raccoon came in here for some food. Most animals in the woods wouldn't bother you unless they were rabid. We don't have anything dangerous like a cougar or a grizzly bear. Most things wouldn't come near a human or would quickly run away if you made noise. All right, look, that came together nice. Well, that smells real good. I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that sauce in there. And I think that will make it, that'll be good. Mix it around, just a little more. I'm about to take it off the burner. This is very hot, so this is gonna take a while to cool. There we go, nice and mixed around. We're gonna get that off. This pot's already hot enough I can barely touch it. Get that over to full heat. In like 10 minutes I'll flip the pieces of fish. In another 10 minutes it should be done. And we're going to open on up the firebox, throw this stuff inside. Look at that, red hot in there. Finally cooking good. Next time I come out here, I just got to remember, let this thing heat up a little bit more, open the flue more, because we're getting a little smoke in with the excess flame. I bet that's going to smell like burnt toast outside, if you can even smell it. It's pretty still, so the smoke's going straight up. But I bet if I did smell it, this is probably going to smell like burnt toast. Don't smell anything. Don't smell anything, don't see anything. It's burning very, very clean. Let's come back into the truck. Just from going back and forth to the truck a couple dozen times, this is packed down to like ice now. Inside's completely melted, and it's keeping a great temperature with the door wide open. This fireplace is going hot. You see, this stove has some imperfections. That bolt wouldn't go in. The front, you can see, is tilted because the bolt holes didn't line up correctly. This is a knockoff stove from China. It's a fake stove of the real company. The real company, the burners actually come off. But why did I get the knockoff stove? Because it was a third of the price, and I only use it two or three times a year on average. So it doesn't really matter too much. And once it gets going, it does a good job. And you know what I learned today? This thing cooks this place a lot better if you're using good hardwoods. The evergreen softwood right there, it struggles to heat this place in these temperatures. What's the temperature outside? Let's go peek. What's it say? It says we're down to four. Yeah, it's four degrees outside, and even with the door open in here at head level is 68. I bet if I shut the door, we'd probably go up to like 80 or even higher. This rice looks delicious, still very hot. Let's go over here and gotta stir this. The next time coming over, it might be too hot to actually touch that lid. That fish is looking good. Got garlic is gonna be good. Is the garlic cooking? Nah, the garlic's not really cooked yet. Probably should have thrown the fish in afterwards a little bit. Trying to flip it without ripping it. It's just so tender. Here we go. Flip it. Flip it. Even with the butter, it's still kind of sticking to the bottom. All right, let that sit in there for another 10 minutes and hopefully the garlic will be cooked enough. 
All right, so that's no longer hot enough where it needs the pot holder. We're gonna go get the other pot. Grab another pot holder, because this is a very heavy pot. Don't know if I can even do it like this. Come on, don't drop it. Oh, ouch, banged my knee on the door. Let's see how it came out. Too hot? Nah, a little bit too hot. That looks good. Yummy. Well, I'll let that cool and we'll make ourselves a plate. Let's go ahead and shut this. It has this little tool because it's now way too hot to touch the handle. Once those go away, you see how they're in there at an angle? Now, if I added more, things could fall out the door. So when you're running a wood stove, what you want to do is... Once it is, I'm going to let it completely turn to hot coals, then with my poker stick, I'm going to drag a bunch of those hot coals towards the front and leveling it out before I put more in there. We'll shut that, let it run a little slower. We don't need as much heat now. We're not cooking, and it's still kind of hot in here, but pretty soon I'll probably shut the door just to see how hot it can really get. This food is still pretty hot to eat, so I'm going to put some onto a plate and I'm gonna wait a little while before I eat it, let it cool. Yeah, that's still pretty hot. That looks really good. We got some beef, chicken, carrots, peas, beans, corn, all mixed together into this nice rice. Nice piece of fish. Grab some of those garlic cloves. I love whole garlic cloves. Let me poke one with a stick or the fork. Oh, good. They're nice and cooked. Not overcooked, but they're not hard anymore. Put some garlic cloves on there. I'm gonna be very stinky when I start sweating tomorrow with all this garlic. It takes like five days for me to get it out of my system when I have a lot of garlic or onions like this. All right, so here's tonight's meal. We got the salmon that still has the fish skin on it. We have a bunch of garlic cloves. We got the, it was supposed to be fried rice. I don't know if you can still call it that, but it had a lot of butter and stuff added to it. So I'm sure it's going to be really good. I'll give that like 10 minutes to cool. Over here we got more rice and we have a second serving of fish. If I'm still hungry, I'll have a second serving. If not, there's going to be a very lucky raccoon or fox. All right, everyone. So it's been about 10 minutes. Outside feels nice and ref refreshing after being in this hot box. But I just went ahead and shut the door. We're going to see how warm it gets in here. The wood stove is now operating down at a normal temp. And um, I forget what I was going to say, but I'm going to start eating now. Well, that piece is a little undercooked for my liking. But this one is soft. Good. With some of that rice. Got some of the hamburg in there. Now we got a piece of chicken and hamburger. These little chunks of hamburger remind me of the sausage that they put on pizza. Kinda. But it doesn't taste like sausage. It tastes like hamburger meat. That fried rice is awesome. I've never made it with butter before. Let's eat some of it with the garlic. Oh, oh, I felt the pepper flake. That was spicy. The garlic mixed into the rice is so good. Try a chunk of that fish. That fish is good. Gotta eat some of that fish with the garlic. I'm going to stink so bad after this. So I've made fried rice like this a couple times in the past, minus the garlic. I never mixed the fish and garlic with it, but I've made rice the same way with the hamburger meat and the canned chicken, canned vegetables, minute rice that I made with broth, and it's very good. This is even more delicious with butter instead of oil. Usually I just use a teeny bit of oil like two tablespoons, but I use an entire stick of butter, which is what, eight tablespoons? 
That's very unhealthy, but it tastes so good. The garlic's a good touch. So usually the vegetables, I'd saute them, get them a little hard before throwing everything in there. Also fry the rice a little bit in very hot oil. Couldn't do that today. Couldn't get the heat to do that. But that being said, this fried rice tastes better than it usually does when I make it. It's so hot in here that this is no longer... See, I usually keep this in the refrigerator at home, and it's thick. But it being hot in here, it's like turning to soy sauce consistency. It's kind of making a mess. I'm going to have to wipe all that up when I'm done. Very good. It kind of reminds me of, or I mean, I bet that's really unhealthy, all the butter. But a lot of things that are very good aren't healthy. Let's see if this defrosted enough. It's still a little icy in there. Can we shake it real hard and make it into like a snow cone consistency? Some drinks will do that if you half freeze them. Some, oh, it did. Oh my gosh, I can see the inside. Can you see that? It turned it to like slush by doing this. I left this in here since the summer. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's expanding the ice. Oh, look at that. Look at it coming out. Wow. It's like a perfect slush puppy consistency. Oh, look, it's still expanding. Look at that. It's expanding. Mm. It's still expanding because this is supposed to be a carbonated drink. I don't know if that's helping it, but look, it's expanding. We probably got two inches out of it so far and it keeps going. Yeah, here it goes. It's still growing. That's really good. This has a lot of butter and oil on it, so I expect this to flare up fast. Let's see how we're doing in there. Throw it in. Let's see how fast that flares up for us. That went fast acting like an accelerant being covered in that butter it's not flammable like gasoline but it is combustible like a diesel so I definitely want to buy a mop and a nice broom the next time I go to the store that will stay with this truck see all this ash I think that's ash but there's like little, see there's a little puddle still remaining there. When it rains really hard, it comes down the chimney. And I believe it's coming out of there. There, that crack. Dripping, because you can see the water marks. Some of it gets down the chimney cap. So, not a big deal. Also, you see how it's like extra dark there. When I'm cooking things, the butter splashes and it actually seasons it. I could paint this entire thing with butter or some kind of cooking oil and it would look black again. Although, it being a little rusty kind of matches the truck. I like how it's rustic. I like how it looks old and still abandoned. That's the reason I don't finish it in here. The mirrors, they came with the truck. This thing was filled to the brim when I first got it with trash. You could not open the doors. You could not, well, you could open the doors. You just could not step foot in here. So much trash. Mouse feces. The roof was leaking at the time, so tons of mold. But we haven't had a mouse in here in a while. The mouse poop on the shelves is just stuff I haven't cleaned since last winter. 
mainly because there was a bunch of stuff here I've been throwing out, so I didn't notice it. These mouse traps were good. The wooden ones I got rid of. Well, actually, these ones don't work that great. So these ones, the mouse opens that little door, which triggers it. But I have a different kind where it steps on a trigger plate made by the same company, Victor. Those are the best ones. I will never buy the wooden ones again. These are a little bit more, but they're always reliable. You never find the food missing without a mouse being caught and maybe in the summer i'll come in here when it's dry maybe with a steel brush i kind of want to paint this stuff here make it look a little better i'll buy silver paint so it kind of matches everything else but i would like to mop the floor because coming in and out of here i am tracking in mud things pop out of the fireplace i'm kind of tracking through ash other things like that all right everyone so i'm over here Crunchy ice just finished the rest of that. This camera light just died. Oh, it's gonna shut right back off, I bet. I gotta attach that to a power bank. So over here, we burned down to just coals. So like I said, we're gonna drag a lot of this forward. I gotta get a better poker stick. Maybe I'll get a, I'll buy a piece of rebar at the store and I'll bend the end of it so it's like a hook. I wanna flatten out the coal bed like that. Come on, get back in there. Ooh. Come on, come on. Boop. There we go. And now we'll just put with one wide piece in there. Once that catches pretty good, we'll add some more on top of it. That'll catch into flames real fast. Look, the flames are already eating it. Give it like a minute and we'll look at it again. This camera light's about to die. This is my super bright one. It's actually made for diving. You hold on to it when you're walking in the woods at night and when it's really cold out. It keeps your hand warm. Inside the house, like this, or inside this building, it actually gets hot enough to burn your hand, which might burn out the light. Is that a thing, maybe? Because it's a dive lamp. I assume it's meant to be cooled by water. But it's fine walking around with it when it's freezing cold, because that does the same thing. It does have a lithium-ion battery. Could overheating make that possibly explode someday or make it unstable? I don't know. But I'm wondering if anyone in the comments has any advice on that. We have finally caught back up. It's been less than one minute. Let's shut the door. And we'll add some more stuff in a couple of more minutes. I tried my best to clean... Ooh, 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 pricker bush right in the face. I tried my best to clean this pan out. Without destroying the seasoning, I scrubbed it with snow and a metal brush. Maybe it'll rust. Maybe I'll have to re-season it anyways. But we will see. I just want to dry it. Maybe that'll help it not rust. I'll just leave it on the stove. Woo. With cookware that's cast iron, you're supposed to leave the grease on. Just wipe it out as good as possible. But there was stuff stuck on it. I just had to scrub it. Also with some snow. That doesn't have to be in there. But I'll leave that there to evaporate. It won't ruin the pan. It's cast iron like the rest. Just leave it there. It'll dry out. And hopefully it's not rusty when I return in the summer to do things. So, I just cleaned up after dinner. I ate a little bit more rice than I gave the rest of the raccoons. Don't have a trail camera with me now. Oh, the light came on. That's always going to scare me. I'm going to put another big chunk of wood in here. Make sure it stays hot for a while. I want to go for a nighttime hike. I'll be gone at least an hour. I don't even care if the building cools down. I just want this thing to, I just want to not have to kindle a new fire. So we'll turn that to half. And I think we're good with the pot. That'll be nice and dry by the time I get back in. The moon is really beautiful out here. We're going to go ahead now and make our way to the little trickling stream. I want to see if it's frozen yet. It's only been cold like this for about two or three days, so it might still be trickling since it's groundwater. And this is as far as my trail goes because this is the edge of the property. This stream 
unfortunately does not go that close to the truck and well that's a good thing if the truck was down here it could potentially flood I guess although there's no evidence the stream ever gets high it's mostly just a collection of groundwater Anytime I'm out in the woods in northern New England, I always like to peer up in the trees and sometimes you see little glowing eyes. There's lots of flying squirrels up north. I've never seen them before I moved far up north. Right now it's so still out the air. There's no wind at all. I don't really have a designated trail going down to the stream. Just gotta kinda find my way to it. Look at that big mushroom right there with snow on top of it. But I won't get lost coming down here because I just gotta walk back up the hill. All right, here we are at the stream. Here's an uprooted tree. That's a pretty fresh uproot. The water's nice and clear. One time I came here to do dishes. If I'm camping here in the summer, I'll use this to do some cleaning up. And it's not suitable for bathing in, but it's very clean water that could be boiled and drank. Very clean little creek. And it's mostly groundwater, so it's very difficult for it to freeze or even stop flowing during a drought because it's coming out of the ground. It relies on water, like the drought would have to be pretty bad for this stream to stop flowing. And the thing is, you see the amount of water here? If I walk up here a couple hundred feet, it disappears into the ground, never to be seen again. Like seriously, it does. You see, right now it's getting covered more and more. You see, we just walk up here a little bit. You can just see some holes where the water's trickling down inside. And if I walk up here another couple of minutes, it's kind of dangerous now in the winter because there's holes covered with snow, but you get the picture, it disappears into nothing so fast. And the amount of water, it's kind of cool how it just comes out of nowhere like that. The open areas have pretty deep snow because none of it's stuck up in the trees. I'd say in the open areas, we got about 14 inches. I gotta tread lightly in the open areas because I'll break through the hard, crusty layer of snow and it's twice as deep then. There's a lot of big rocks down here. Like, this looks like at some point, this whole thing was a river because we got all these big boulders all over the place down in this valley. You got the hill going back up there. You got the hill going up there. Like, it used to be a, like a historic riverbed, it kind of looks like or a place that at least used to flood. Who knows what this place used to be like a couple hundred years ago. Probably got a lot more snow back then and maybe it melted really fast and this would become a temporary river every now and then. There are a lot of random rocks all over the place, big rocks. Ooh, we got some kind of animal tracks over here. Maybe a raccoon, maybe a fox. I think it's probably a raccoon. See, it jumped up over this log, continued up here. There's some more fallen trees. Look at that one. Oh wow, this tree here, that's a gigantic one. I wish that one was on my property. Wow. It's a gigantic maple tree. I wish I had one that big. Trees don't really grow as much up north. They don't grow as big as in the south. Right here, this would be a good one to try tapping. You wanna tap right below the, the first big limb is usually the best spot for it. We also got this other tree stuck up there. Wow, there's another maple here. That tree, this one must have just broken in the recent storm. That looks like a pretty fresh break. Could have been earlier in the year. That one's also stuck up there. 
a bunch of widow makers. So a lot of the woods around here is actually logging woods. So what they do is they cut it down, they replant it, but they plant it so close to each other because they want maximum harvest when they come back in about 40 years that because they're so close, they don't get good root systems. They don't grow very strong. They grow really skinny. So they're very weak and can't really put up with storms like an old growth forest can. And forests like this will have mass die-offs if there was ever a, if it was ever allowed to stay woods because they're just too close to each other. A lot of them would have to die and make room for others. And if there's ever a forest fire, it'll be even worse in a situation like this. Like you see all these openings everywhere. Like this looks like it could have been a road for a log skid. Stuff like that. Right there, property line. That gigantic one is only 30 feet off the property. And it's owned by the logging company, so I know they wouldn't care if I tapped it. They got a bunch of them here. These ones are much bigger than the rest in their logging forest because I think that the logging company just doesn't want to come very close to the property line and have a dispute or make someone angry. So they stay away from people's properties a good amount. So I think sometime I want to tap. These are two really big maple trees. You see their big canopies? I kind of want to tap both of these at some point. I don't know if I'll be around this spring, but at some point it'd be nice to tap those. Oh, this right here is definitely a logging road, this opening. Look at this. This is definitely a logging road. So they did log right up to the property line, but they left these trees big for some reason. Maybe it's because they didn't want to, maybe they're not allowed to log down in the swamp. Maybe it's a little too close. That might be what it is. All right, we're back. So I went for a walk in the woods I showed, but when I was done with the walk, I didn't come back here. Went for a little drive into town, and I did just buy a mop. Maybe I can clean it up in here. I did not buy a broom. I'll just live with that raggedy one for a little longer. Wow, it's still so warm in here. Barely cooled down. Wait, wait. What's the temperature outside? Goose egg. Exactly zero. So we are dropping. We'll be in the negative soon. It doesn't matter to me how cold it is. I love the cold as long as there's no breeze or wind. It's tolerable. I love going for walks in the cold like this. We're back and it's very warm in here still. 74. It's stayed warm. Back when I was, look at that, still about in operating temps. When I was using just the evergreen, we never could have left this long and still had it hot like this. Yes, I, with the evergreen would be combustible, the embers in there for like six hours. But I remember waking up all the time, freezing after just three hours when we camped out here last year when it was negative 20. I kept having to wake up every three hours or so and load wood because it kept dropping the temp. But this thing, quality wood makes quality embers. And this thing will stay very hot. I haven't been in here in three hours. Look at this. Still got really good coals. This is gonna stay hot a long time tonight, despite how cold it is outside, so. You can burn pine, you can burn evergreen. Mix it in, if, it, if you have it, that's what I do at home. I mix it in because I have an abundance of it, but it doesn't last as long, and it doesn't produce as much heat. It's only got half of the energy value, and look, we, we burned through this box faster than I thought. I'm gonna have to go back to the rear of the truck and grab a whole nother box for later. But these bigger pieces like this, that's what makes good coals. That'll keep this entire truck warm for three, four, five hours probably. That big thick one I just put in there. Now I wanna do a little bit of mopping in here while it's warm and it'll actually be able to dry up. So let that cool down, we'll put that pot away. And what can I use as a mop bucket that I don't mind getting dirty. We'll use that pot that I said I was going to probably get rid of because I don't want aluminum contamination when I'm boiling off maple syrup. That's what that'll be for. 
At some point, I want to make another maple syrup video. I already have a pretty good one of the process from about two years ago, if anyone's interested. All right, so this pot here has a big lump. I'm assuming it was left outside once and frozen, but it fits on that burner okay because of the way it is. But I'm going to try to... Oh, wow, that was easier than I thought. So there's more surface area down there. I almost got my foot stuck. Let's use a log as a hammer. Good enough. I'm gonna walk to the stream and fill this thing up like halfway with water. Then we're gonna boil it on the stove just to get it a little bit warm because I feel like warm water is better for cleaning the floor. And then I'm gonna, I don't have anything better. I'm gonna just add this to the solution. Maybe that'll help clean the floor a little bit. At some point, I want to replace this poker stick, and I want to find maybe a nice set of poker sticks to put in here. The ones I have in my house, I actually found free on the side of the road. So we got the fire going now pretty hot. This has been on here now for about 30 minutes, and the fire is going good. We're in good operation. It's slightly steaming. All right, yeah, I can't touch that water more than a second. It's not boiling yet, but... Pretty hot, I think we're good. So now I wanna pick up any debris in here, like I wanna put these logs off to the side. I'm gonna sweep all this while it's pretty dry. Sweep out everything. And we, we only really gotta mop in the heavy traffic areas, like I'm not even gonna go under the bed or anything. Just mop it up, try to make it look a little nicer. So this mop, it's made for like a janitor's cart that squeezes it. This thing doesn't squeeze itself, it appears. So I'll just have to dip it, let it drip for a minute, then use it. But it's so hot in here, this should dry up pretty quickly, I think. Let's see if we can get some more stuff out of the way. Yeah, that pot can just be stored outside as a random bucket. All right, time to see if Windex will add anything. I've, I use Windex as cleaner sometimes because it's the only thing around better than nothing. Because if it can clean grime and grease off a window, I'm sure it can help clean something off the floor. So let's grab that mop. All right, let's put some extra lighting in here because I'm about to do some mopping and cleaning. All right, everyone, so right now, I should have bought a dustpan. Gotta squeeze it out here, and then sweep it out the door. Using hardwood instead of softwood to heat this place is actually awesome. It's not struggling at all, despite how cold it is outside. In fact, it's actually too hot in here. We're, we have no struggle like we have in every other winter camp. Using quality wood really helps. Maybe next time I'll buy a dustpan. Oh. Alright, let's go ahead and get to mopping. The ceiling's not very high in here. Up, up. Yeah, I, I should take it off the stove. Yeah, I can definitely smell the Windex real strong. It did not dilute it. Maybe I can wring it out a little. Ah, uh, no, that's real hot water now. Wow, instant results. Yeah, everyone, take a look at how dirty the floor is. Instant results, look at that. Look at all that grime I've been tracking in. Oh 
my gosh, that water became so nasty from all that dirt and ash on the floor, soot, that we've been tracking in on our shoes the past two years. I deep cleaned this a few years ago with scrub brushes. And I even brought a garden hose in here, pumping it from the stream with a power bank. And yeah, the floor looks shiny again. It looks a lot better in here. The rest of it is just rust marks. It looks like somebody maybe spray painted in here at some point. That's what that looks like. I thought that was ash at first. It's not, it's paint. And the rest of the room looks a lot better than it did. Well, the room looks a lot cleaner than it did just by mopping it up. And it's warm enough in here that this should all dry up just running the wood stove hot. And I'll let that drip dry for a couple minutes, then we'll bring it right back in. Alright everyone, I just put the mop right here. It's dripping, but it'll dry. Just brought more firewood in. What do you think? Is my cheese and bread going to be frozen in the morning when I go to make grilled cheese? It's okay, I can defrost. Those things defrost really easily. The floor is already starting to dry. Most of it around the stove has definitely dried up. It looks a lot better now. All right, everyone, I just brought in a bunch of firewood. That's probably enough for tonight and probably our next time out here. Just brought a bunch in so I don't have to do it next time. This really big piece will go in right before bed. That'll take a while. This building's made of metal, so a fire in here is very unlikely to become severe. But, for anyone who does ask, no, I don't have to go by the wood stove to escape. There is a emergency exit in the back. So this latch down to the floor is broken. All I gotta do is take this, pull down, releasing this one thing, and that side pushes out. Alright everyone, it's getting pretty late. It's about 2 in the morning. I'm gonna finally fall asleep. The floor completely dried up except that little puddle right there, but that'll be gone by morning. It only got down to about negative four outside. Not that bad. Good night, everyone.
Good afternoon, everyone. That's right, it's not even morning anymore. I slept so long in here. You might have seen during the time lapse, I got up once, had to use the bathroom. All that garlic last night made me extremely gassy. Then after five hours of the camera running, the camera shut off because the power bank for some reason stopped supplying it power even though it's still got a good charge, but that's okay. I then woke up later at probably nine in the morning and then just now at about 12.30, loaded this thing up twice more with firewood, heating it up, and we're gonna make breakfast now. Let's go see if the bread and cheese got completely frozen or not. All right, everyone, what do you think? Is there gonna be completely frozen, or did the cooler protect it enough? Because it's very cold here. Outside right now has got up to about 15 degrees, but last night, the coldest I ever saw, because I woke up to use the bathroom, I think it was 5 in the morning, I looked out at the temp, we got down to about negative 4, that's about the lowest we got. Are we frozen? It's a little on the cold side, it's a little hard, but no, not frozen. It's just like we refrigerated it. Nice. For next time I come out here in the winter, I'm going to have to get a thermometer we keep inside there, too, to see what the engine bay gets down to. Well, actually, the engine bay should be exactly the same as outside because it's very open. We'll have to put one inside the cooler. everyone I'm pulling up my chair to the wood stove unwrapping some butter we're gonna butter up the pan nice and hot melting nice and fast I was gonna cook two grilled cheeses at the same time but the pans not big enough that's okay we're gonna brown the side of the bread a little bit Flip it, put cheese on it, and brown the outsides a little bit more. That's how I cook mine. All right, everyone. We got this thing roaring now for cooking. It's been on there about 10 minutes. It's finally started to become brown, but it will not take 10 minutes again for the other side, which I'm going to brown up a little bit more than that. I'm going to go ahead and put cheese on it now. Oops. Start the cheese melting a little bit. Depending what mood I'm in, sometimes I'll put a little bit of seasoning on it or even hot pepper flakes. All right, everyone, it's only been a couple minutes and this thing certainly is cooking a lot faster. See, it's a little bit golden brown now, nice. And actually, my brain wasn't thinking. At first, I was gonna try cooking two at the same time. I only put two pieces of cheese on my sandwich usually, but now I got four, because I wasn't thinking for some reason. But that's okay, we'll have an extra cheesy sandwich, and now I'll make a normal one with only two pieces. Yeah, we got this thing really hot compared to before. Now we'll be able to start pumping out grilled cheese fast. Look at that, we're now pumping out grilled cheese faster than I can eat them. Take this off for now. But I'll probably have a third one in a little bit. I just gotta eat this now. And look at that, everyone, my third grilled cheese sandwich. We have enough cheese to make one more or two more if one of them has two and one has one slice. Actually, the coldest day we've had all year. 
It's been a little bit. Let's warm this back up. It's still a little uncomfortable to touch, even though it's been sitting there for a bit. Let's use up the rest of the grilled cheese. This is a very unhealthy camping video. That's our third stick of butter we're going through, and it's almost gone. But it's not like I eat like this every day. I only eat like this when I'm camping, and it's good for you to have a lot of fat when you're camping in cold conditions. Not this because it's like being indoors, but normal winter camping videos. It's actually a good thing to eat a lot of fattening food. All right, everyone, I'm waiting for my grilled cheeses to cool, and in the meantime, I just took a paper towel, wiped out all the butter, and the pan looks perfect. Once it cools down, I'll hang it back up. Cookware that's made out of cast iron, you're not supposed to use soap. Water's okay sometimes, but you want them to remain greasy like that with butter or whatever. And we'll probably do the same thing to the stove, maybe if we come out here in the summer. We'll paint it with some kind of oil, and then we'll let it heat up and it'll turn into that nice darkness you see anywhere where we spilled butter it looks darker and this thing is running very very hot i put really small kindling in there so there's more flame that makes it get a lot hotter and yeah it's 80 degrees in here right now and i had to keep moving my legs away from that when i was cooking because i was burning my knees i just had to open the door it's too hot in here So I've learned that just a little bit of Italian season actually makes it taste a lot better in my opinion. It adds some good flavor to it, makes it a little less cheesy. So that was really good there. And last night I did learn it's a horrible idea to eat 50 cloves of garlic yourself. Even though it tastes really good, it does make you bloated for a little bit. Not, it wasn't horrible, it wasn't that painful. Just, I could feel bloating, and then in the middle of the night, I had explosive diarrhea. Alright, we're not running as hot anymore, but we're going to run very hot for a split second, because I'm going to discard our greasy paper towels in there, which those will flare up like fuel. We're going to throw all those greasy paper towels in there. Hear that noise? It's causing some flames to race up the chimney. So we'll shut that and drown it out a teeny bit so we don't get too many flames going up the pipe. Let's look outside, see if it's smoking or burning it off clean. Yep, it's burning so hot that it's burning it off completely clean. Oh wow, look at the slope in the snow and it goes right back up. This pipe is so hot, it's melting a bunch of the snow around it. And every now and then you can hear a little Almost two in the afternoon, and we're at about nine degrees. All right, everyone, so I'm in the process of getting ready to leave. The mop is still damp, but it'll dry. Got everything put back together. Taking that stuff with me, the spices, because something might want to eat it. Don't leave food in here. Leaving the cooler behind. Last night I had to use some lotion. I don't know if you could tell, but my knuckles were starting to bleed from it just being so dry, being near the wood stove, and I guess going back and forth from being dry and touching freezing firewood outside. So now it's sitting about 80 degrees, despite the door being half open. If I shut it, it would go way up probably. So, quality wood had zero issues sleeping. I got the best night of sleep I ever got just because of the change in what we're burning. So right there, I'm leaving behind my gallon of water for next time. That pot's clean, taking my power banks. I just cleaned up this. I didn't have any cleaner, so I used water and Dawn dish soap to clean the counter, which I think is good enough. 
I'll probably leave the Powerades behind for next time. In my experience, all these type of bottles can freeze without breaking. If you get the cheap ones that are like a milk carton, those break when they freeze. These ones don't. Although I have stored things before where a mouse will nibble it because it knows there's water in there and it'll start slowly leaking because of that. But amazingly, I didn't have to clean any mouse poop this time. When I came in here for the summer camp, I had to clean the counter was covered in poop. It was on every surface. The only poops now are on the shelf and I know that was already there. And there was nothing in the mouse traps. It's amazing, nothing came in. So every time I get Powerade or Gatorade, it has these things around them. You always want to break these, the plastic holding it together because it's going to end up in a landfill where things like seagulls and raccoons, other animals will pick through the trash because people throw out so much food and that gets stuck around their neck and can kill them. I'm also going to go ahead and take things like this, my plates, that towel, extra toilet paper, pot holders, anything a mouse might want to chew and make a nest out of. We'll try to jam it in here. I don't know if all the paper towels are going to fit. I might have to take them out of there. No, nope, never mind. They fit perfect. Let's collect all that other stuff. Don't want to give the mice anything that they can build a nest out of. Take the dish towel. Anything. Just throw it in there and they won't be able to get to it or even know it exists. Look what I just found in the side of the truck. Huge icicle. We're melting a lot off the roof and it's freezing as it dribbles down the side. But I was able to rip it off the side really easy because it can't really stick to the side of the truck either. It's warm. We're all ready to go. Just got a couple things. I'm going to sit in here with the fire a little longer. When it dies down a little bit, I'll take off. Although... It can be unattended. I just want to be with the fire because it's kind of fun. All right, we're all packed up. Got these braces back in. I put them in a better situation than before. Before, this thing was right next to the stove. Now I can run the stove without worrying about burning the paint off of this. If I ever have to leave them in place if I think there's too much snow. But I don't think that would ever happen. I would definitely shovel the snow off so I could remove this. But this is a precaution so it doesn't get crushed. If we get ab an abnormal amount of snow... This will maybe save it until we think of a better roofing solution. Just threw another piece in there just to keep it warm while I'm cleaning up. I'm still going to sweep the floor, get it as clean as possible before I get out of here. Also, this thing, we ran it so hot with this new wood, we melted, I'd say, a third of the snow off the roof. If I stayed here a couple of days, we'd get it all off. All right, everyone, it's getting dark and we are out of here. All right, everybody. I hope today's video was interesting. Thanks for watching and have a great day.